so in order to learn about programming, we need to learn new language. This will be a way to describe what we want the computer to do in a much more precise way than we could in a natural language like English. And it's a way to describe programs that the Python interpreter can run. One of the best ways to learn a programming language is to just try things. You can try that in the Python interpreter that's running in your browser. Let's, for example, try running print 2 plus 2 plus. In English, someone could probably guess that the value of 2 plus 2 plus should be 4. In Python, when we try running this, we get an error. And the reason we get an error is that this is not actually part of the Python language. The Python interpreter only knows how to evaluate code that's part of the Python language. If you try to evaluate something that's not part of the Python language, it will give you an error. Errors look a bit scary the way they print out, but there's nothing bad that can happen. It's perfectly OK to try running code. If it produces an error, that's one of the ways to learn about programming. The error we got here is what's called a syntax error. That means that what we tried to evaluate is not actually part of the Python language. Like English, Python has a grammar that defines what strings are in the language. In English, we can make lots of sentences that are not completely grammatical, and people still understand them. But there's some underlying grammar behind the language. Those of you who are native English speakers might have learned rules like this in what was once called grammar school. Those of you who learned English as a second language probably learned rules like this when you were learning English. So English has a rule that says you can make a sentence by combining a subject with a verb followed by an object. Almost every language has a rule sort of like this. The order of the subject and the verb and the object might be different. But there's a way to combine those three things to form a sentence. The subject could be a noun. The object could also be a noun. And then each of these parts of speech, well, we have lots of things that could be. So a verb could be the word eat. A verb could also be the word like. And there are lots of other words that the verb could be. A noun could be the word I. A noun could be the word Python. A noun could be the word cookies. The actual English grammar is, of course, much larger and more complex than this. But we can still think of it as having rules like this that allow us to form sentences from the parts of speech that we know, from the words that make those parts of speech. The way we're writing grammars here is a notation called Bacchus Norform. And this was invented by John Bacchus. So John Bacchus was the lead designer of the Fortran programming language back in the 1950s at IBM. This was one of the first widely used programming languages. And the way they described the Fortran language was with lots of examples and text explaining what they meant. And this is a shot from the actual manual for the first version of Fortran. This worked OK. Many programs were able to understand it and guess correctly what it meant, but was not nearly precise enough. And when it came time to design a later language, which was the language called Algol, it became clear that this informal way of describing languages wasn't precise enough. And John Backus invented the notation that we're using here to describe languages.